and hello everyone my name is Theodore and today we're okay. gonna I... hello hello I... <laughs> yeah today we're gonna so discuss um, <coughs> some bare essentials of uh, fluid mechanics usually used for undergraduate studies and yeah you may find that in uh, your university course you may cover way more content but um, this course is just this video series anyway it's just one to um, introduce you, you to some of the concepts, get, help you get intuition because it can be a very challenging uh, part of uh, engineering. So, without further ado, let's get started. Um, the first thing we want to ask is what's a fluid? I mean, that's kind of a you know, obvious, obvious kind of thing, obvious question. You see all these pictures on Pixabay here of uh, fluids. Uh, you see water, obviously a fluid, <coughs> but uh, it's more than just uh, liquids and water, it also applies to gas. And in fact, uh, sometimes you can have powder that behaves like a fluid. So what is a fluid exactly? Let's go look at Wikipedia. Fluid. So it is a substance that has no fixed shape and used easily to external pressure, a gas or liquid. That is what uh, dictionary.com says. But uh, we want to see the physics definition and from Wikipedia, the part I'm highlighting here, it says a fluid is a substance that continuously deforms or flows under applied shear stress or external force. So fluids can include liquids, gases and plasma. And if you are studying chemical engineering, you may heard of this thing called fluidized bin. Now, fluids may not always need, need to be um, may not always need to be uh, liquids, gases, or plasmas. Let me try and find a good picture of this fluidized bin. Um, Okay, this is a very crude <laughs> picture of it. But you see, when you blow gas through, let's say, a bit of powder, the powder will start to, um, to be, you know, uh, expand. The pack bit will begin to expand because you're pumping gas into it. And eventually, once you, once you pump the gas fast enough, then the powder will start to so-called liquefy in a, in a very similar way to how the ground liquefies when you have earthquakes. The powders can also liquefy under fluid uh, interactions and if you search fluidization on YouTube, fluidization, oopsie, oopsie, wrong one. Fluidization. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yes, you see this uh, video, fluidization of sand. You can go and check it out. And basically, what it, what happens is that when you blow air through this sand, or uh, you blow some kind of fluid or air. You can see these two videos here, fluid, liquid sand, hot tub, fluidized bit, or fluidization of sand. You see, even when you, you, you blow a liquid or gas through some solid phase matter, it can start behaving like a fluid as well. So it's not, it may not... Uh, so are these fluids? So that's kind of a grey area in that sense. But if you go by the... If you go by the Wikipedia definition of a fluid, it says it's any substance that continuously flows or deforms under applied shear stress. That means if you press it, it will start to deform. If you apply a force, it can start to flow around. And somehow these uh, fluidized bits kind of fit this category. But that's another topic for another time. So we're not going to discuss that, but that's just to kind of expose you to some of these uh, concepts out there. So we, we are going to tackle fluids in the traditional sense of the word. We don't want to discuss uh, these kind of exotic cases. Maybe we want to talk, look at simple things like water or oil, or in some people, like they look to look at air. 
or molten salt or liquid metals. And yeah, these are some kinds of fluids that we study in uh, engineering. And yeah, what exactly do we want to study in fluids uh, or in fluid mechanics for that matter? Well, let's start uh, with some scenarios. Why do we want to study? Let's say you have a pump here. A very crude drawing of a pump. Now what is a pump? A pump is uh, something that takes a fluid at a low pressure. Let's say this, uh, this thing here on the left. I'm going to brush it in blue. I'm going to brush it in blue, yeah. And the right side. <coughs> I'm going to put a, a lighter blue color. Okay, so there's fluid going from the left side to the right side. And this pump. Okay, let me try. This pump. Okay. This pump is taking this fluid here from a low pressure to fluid here in high pressure. Now, normally pumps are not there on their own. They are usually part of a circuit, maybe in a plant. You have some piping. It goes to do some other things and it goes one big round. For example, in an air conditioner, you will have a, a pump that's a pumping fluid around the circuit and then you ask yourself hey um, yeah, yeah. I how do you want to design this pump how much energy does it need yeah. so this, this in this case you want to study some of the energy aspects of fluids so that we can design uh, pumps or we can kind of uh, figure out how much energy we need to pump in because that will affect the electricity bill how much power you need to generate and consume. This is just one aspect of uh, what we study in fluid mechanics and that provides us some motivation to study fluid mechanics. What else? So I'm going to clear this. Next thing, let's say um, we have an airfoil. Okay, what is an airfoil? So I'm going to draw it out here very crudely so it's an airfoil an airfoil is a aeroplane and if you see uh, the shapes of the wings on the aeroplane you you find something like this if you look at the cross section and what will happen is that fluid or air in this case will come from the left going to the right come from the left going to the right and this is supposed to generate some sort of lift okay. it is going to generate some kind of lift then uh, the question is how do you know how much lift this is going to generate now for this we will need to also understand fluid mechanics and this this is where we kind of uh, we kind of need to understand you know how much the pressure here is what are the pressures here pressures at the bottom pressure at the bottom and the pressure at the top because if you um, if you know how the airfoil works, I mean, generally, the principle is that the pressure at the bottom is higher than the pressure at the top. And therefore, there is a force pushi pushing the airfoil upwards, and this generates lift in a, in a, what do you call it, in an airfoil, in an aeroplane wing, so to speak. So, how much, how much, uh, how, how are you supposed to design this wing? Now this is the other thing about uh, fluid mechanics where we study 
pressures and stresses uh, let's say on this airfoil it's very useful for aerodynamics so stress analysis now when I'm talking about stress here it is not the uh, stress you experience when you're studying and there's a very hot exam paper what I'm talking about is a vector stress okay I'm going to save it here video okay I'm going to talk about stress here these are the stress aspects of fluid the notation is usually Sigma so this is I'm, I'm using a Microsoft equation editor you can use LaTeX or anything uh, but I just uh, use alternate equal to start it writing equations then you can just watch how I type the equations here and maybe you can learn how to use it as well but anyway <coughs> Sigma equals to forced over area so now pressure is usually also called force over area P equals to F by A I see pressure is usually a scalar quantity while stress is a vector quantity so I'm going to put a VEC here to notate that it is a vector now understanding stress is very important because if you have if you want to know how much lift you are generating you got to understand the stresses that are acting this way basically okay you have to integrate uh, don't don't be too scared by it but you have to consider the little stresses that are experienced by each part of this aeroplane wing and you have to sum them all up to see how much lift you will get and that is stress analysis and we are also interested in looking at the drag and the drag will tend to cause your uh, airfoil or aeroplane to slow down so the force the force is uh, the force by the the force experienced by the airfoil is usually to pull it backwards okay it is opposite of the flight direction so it will experience a lot of drag and depending on the drag you will need to design proper aeroplane engines so there's lift and there's drag and that is why there's another analysis of uh, fluid uh, dynamic studies or fluid mechanic studies and this is very important for aerospace engineering so this is an yet another reason why we are interested to study fluid mechanics now the last the last thing I want to talk about is let's say you have a uh, air conditioner okay how does the air conditioner kind of work well, generally this is a very simplified way of doing it you will have some uh, let's see let's use a very nice yes greenish color and a brush so you have some fluid that's flowing through a pipe okay and then you will have a fan how do I draw a fan okay let me draw a fan here I'll blue color yeah okay this is a very crude drawing of a fan and let me use paint oops here so you can imagine this fan is rotating and it's blowing air across this so it's going to take in air from surroundings air and it's going to blow it across <coughs> a pipe in the case of a cooler you, have a <coughs> you will have hot air from the surroundings the fan will blow it across a series of cold pipes and then what comes out is cold air so in the case of an air conditioner you have hot air coming in 
Yeah. And cold air coming out. Um, now, how hard should the fan be blowing? How much fluid should we pump through this pipe in a in let's say five minutes? What should be the flow rate of this? How should we design our pipes? How we should we design um you know the whole uh, air conditioner? And yeah, let's say if uh if you're in a cold country. Uh, you won't have hot air anymore here. Yeah. You may have cold air coming in from the surroundings, going into the fan, and the fan will blow it, blow cold air across, probably across tubes with uh, hot air or electric heater, and then hot air will be blown out to heat up your room. So again, the question is, how much should we, how hard should, how should we design our fan? And how should we design uh, our, you know, um, the 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 tubes, so to speak? And this this is uh, another reason we are very interested in understanding fluids is that we want to understand heat transfer, specifically in the case of convection. Now, what you are seeing here is what we call forced convection which is, uh, you know, you have a fan that's blowing hot air across pipes or in general you have a pump or fan blowing fluid across a heated or cold uh, object and that causes it to transfer heat from the object to the fluid. There's also natural convection where you, where you have the same uh, cold air sinks and hot air rises. That's also another aspect of uh, heat transfer and fluid mechanics uh, coming together hand in hand. So these are just some of the aspects of fluid mechanics that we want to study and that's why we are interested to study fluid mechanics. We have the energy aspects, we want to design pumps, the stress analysis which is very important let's say for uh, aerospace engineering, you want to do turbines or wind, uh, wind turbines, windmills etc. Stress analysis is very important and heat transfer is very important for designing uh, heaters, air conditioners and heat exchangers in general. Now, um, in this uh, series of videos, we want to focus more on this and somewhat go into this. But, uh, you know, heat transfer is a topic uh, wholly on its own. So, um, we won't be looking that much into heat transfer in this video series per se, but uh, you will need to understand some of the concepts in this video series in order to understand convection a little better. Now, stress analysis that's going to be in this video series less uh, less of an emphasis. We'll study some basic cases, maybe like you know, uh, fluid flowing over a ball or sphere, in that sense. Um, but uh, the concepts that you you'll probably encounter in this video series is going to um, help you understand the basic principles beside, uh, behind, let's say, when you have a real aerofoil or hydrofoil. And a hydrofoil is the equivalent of a, a wing that, go, that is going underwater. And whether it's an aerofoil or hydrofoil or hydroplane or whatever, yeah, you will need to understand this stress analysis. Again, we won't be going so much into it, but the concepts that are being uh, explained here should help you transi transition into understanding some of the other um, concepts that, are in, that we need to know in uh, designing wings and stuff. But again, yeah, we are mostly focusing more on these two aspects. And that's what this video series is going about. So this is just the introduction, so we're going to start uh, our first video in the next uh, in, the, uh, in the next video, I'm going to introduce some of the basic concepts of energy analysis. So I'm just going to paint it here. There you go. This is where we're going to start. Then maybe we want to look at some other aspects as well. Alright, thanks for watching this introduction video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.